Let's do that. Um, all right, first of all, I've officially started the recording. And now we're going to go live on Facebook. Let's see if this works today. <laughs> uh, share on a page. Just keep letting people in. I've been doing it. We're at 30. Awesome. The capacity for this yeah. is 100. Let's see if we break it. That'd be cool. We'll, we'll break it or beat it. Break it. Whatever, whatever you prefer. I, you know, that's, that's a personal choice, Matthew. <laughs> All right. This is the bullet proof bookkeeping. Coming out party. With quick <laughs> <laughs> coming out. <laughs> I almost typed that now. Coming out. Party. <laughs> that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> uh, course release. I, it's it's funny because I didn't know if uh, if this would be like appealing to people to do. I just thought you know if recording artists on record labels do like album release parties, why can't I do a chorus release party for my chorus? Right, right. I'm kind of like a rock star for chorus creationers. I don't know. Yes, anyway, you are. Yeah. You're a rock star. <laughs> but I thought record releases had alcohol. I don't. I don't have anything in my hand. I have There's my pseudo. No here. I have my fake champagne right here. <laughs> it's BYOB it's, party. Yeah, it's, it's bring your own. Yeah. Well, then I'm out of luck. You Shannon, have to bring your you, own. You're just slacking is what you're doing. That's why, Shannon, that's why we hire assistants. That so you could send somebody out to go get you your supplies, right? Your office supplies that you need. I'm going to need to hire older assistants. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Over 21. That's a good, that's a good point. <laughs> that is a good point. That's okay. So college interns, right? All right. So we're preparing the live stream. It's about to go live on Facebook. Thank you for making me think of that, Matthew. I actually had thought of it at one point, but I, I wasn't about to. You are now live. All right. I am now live. Now I'm going to go find it and share it to the page. <laughs> Or the group, rather. The Between Wall and Main group. I'll do that for you. You will? You'll take care of it? Yep. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close the Facebook tab. Actually, no. I'll leave it open on the live feed so that if people are commenting there, I can respond. There it is. Live just now. Okay. So... I honestly couldn't be happier with the way things turned out with this because like I was saying, I started out pre-selling it. I was encouraged to do that by my friends in the Kajabi uh, users group on Facebook. Uh, Kajabi, as many of you may well know, is the platform that I decided to use to deliver this course. And then as I was working on it, decided to move my whole website over to it because I just love the platform so much. So I have to give big props to Kajabi. Um, they helped me make this possible. Um, and it's just, it's such an awesome platform it, and I get to do everything in one place with it. All the email marketing, everything now is handled through Kajabi. I have, and now they've just added analytics. So I have really good analytics. I can see who's doing what and where and when, and it's, you know, it's awesome from the standpoint of trying to run a business and trying to get data that helps you understand what's working well and what isn't. So and, uh, and I want to reiterate that the real challenge of today is for me to get you all to take me seriously looking like this. So we'll see how this goes. But, um, but they did. They, I got all kinds of suggestions, and what I ended up doing was a bit of a hybrid. First, I made sure I had an entire section ready to go, and then I started pre-selling it. And a lot of you here have already signed up, and I'm going to ask those of you who have already signed up to say a few words at a certain point, especially if you've had a chance to really get into the content. I know that Lisa has. Um, I know some of you signed up very recently. So like Greg, have you had a chance to go through it much yet? No, I didn't think so. You just signed up like two days ago or something. Um, just three or four days ago. So the first thing I want to do though, before we dive into any of the real meat, is uh, I want to release officially the last two lessons on the course. So I'm going here and you can see it here. This is the back end of the course. So I've got each of the major sections in here and here are the last two under the <laughs> section on maintaining your books and, you know, having a checklist. Um, the first lesson is already live. 
uh, I launched it earlier this week. And then I did two follow-ups to kind of give you two choices. You can either use Smartsheet or ClickUp to manage your monthly bookkeeping process. Of course, there's lots of other choices out there, but these are like my top two choices for what to use. And uh, so I'm going to hit the button here to make them go live. So we do a countdown. All right, everybody want to? All right, yeah. So let me do a countdown. Count me down. Five, four, three, two, one, go. One hundred. Ninety-nine. Oh God. Ninety-two. All right. Wait, wait, wait. We started this at four hundred ninety-seven, so that's where we should start from. Ah. Uh, All right. You know what? Now we're now. I'm just going to go live. One. And two. It's official. The last two lessons officially live. <laughs> Woohoo! Yay! So if you're logged in, just refresh your page and you'll find these lessons in the course. Um, let me go back out to the front end of the site here. And ironically, those are going to be the first two that I want. Yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't get to upgrade to ClickUp 2.0 before I did that one. So I'm going to have to add a supplemental lesson. And that's one thing I want to make really sort of clear here is that I'm going to be, it's not over. There's definitely going to be more content added. I've already had people ask questions by posting on some of the lessons. And as a result, I've added in screenshots and other things, you know, to uh, help enhance the content. So if somebody asks a question, it becomes clear to me that it would be useful to put in a supplemental video. I'm going to. And there's also a few lessons which you'll see in the course outline that are marked with a status of planned, meaning those are also going to get added to the course. I realized uh, when I was well into recording this stuff that I hadn't done, I hadn't included a lesson specifically on sales taxes. So we're going to do that one because um, that's kind of important. And a few people have even asked about it, even as recently as when they were signing up for this very webinar, uh, people had asked me. Uh, about that. So that's definitely going to get added in. The complete course outline, now I can finish it. These are no longer processing. These are now published. And so this, I think some of you may have seen, it's the smart sheet or the smart sheet, the Airtable version of my outline. So that's when you know you have too many apps when you start misspeaking on them. Um, this is the outline of the entire oh, course. Monkey. What? No, that was, that was you. I was, I was oh, already sorry. starting starting the video. Gotcha. So this is the entire course outline. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add in a section at the front of the entire course that's going to be like welcome to Bulletproof Bookkeeping. And I'll embed this sort of version of the outline here. Because yes, of course, it's laid out beautifully on the site. Um, when you first go in, you can click on any of the major sections and you'll see that they expand into all the lessons that are included in that sec section. And then once you click into a particular lesson, it just kind of walks you through lesson by lesson, category by category. So this first one is obviously just real simple. Here's how to connect your bank feeds. Most of you won't ever need to review this video. It's designed for people who are truly and really new to QuickBooks Online, right? And some people had asked when they were signing up about like who this is aimed at, you know, who this is uh, sort of targeted for. And the truth is I originally had the plan of targeting small business owners with this. I wanted to create the quintessential bookkeeping course and resource for small business owners. And what happened was, of course, project management accountants tools. and We're bookkeepers, oh, somebody's replaying me for the world. Oh, um, sorry. I, thought, I thought I was muted. That's okay. Um, so what happened was a lot of accountants and bookkeepers were signing up. And then I was curious. So I said, what do you think? And, and, and I got really good feedback. So what I did was I actually renamed the course. It was originally called the Business Owners Bulletproof Bookkeeping Course. And so I ended up renaming the course and just calling it Bulletproof Bookkeeping with QuickBooks Online. And because I feel that to answer that question, and that was one of the questions specifically, is this course geared towards accountants, bookkeepers, or business owners? And the answer is all of the above. I think that there will probably be some lessons in here that a business owner who's not you know, doesn't have like a real accounting or financial background might look at and be overwhelmed by it, which is fine because this course was designed to be sort of used and looked at two different ways. It's, it's, it's designed in such a way that you can certainly go through it sequentially. And there's a clear and logical sequence to what I teach you and in a certain order so that if you're really trying to get started learning how to do this whole bookkeeping process, it's, it's laid out just like that for you but it's also laid out to be a reference tool where there's just a lot of detailed lessons. And if you want to go and review that one specific thing, you can do that. You know, it's here. 
And this outline is you're going to see as we go through it, um, first of all, it shows you the duration of each video, which you can also see once you get into the lesson, it shows you this video is 34 minutes, right? If you uh, look here, you'll see I've got it broken down by section and then each lesson, uh, each video's duration and the total, the grand total for the course so far now is 13 hours and 12 minutes and 48 seconds of video included in this course. So that's uh, just some numbers in terms of what you're you know, getting here for the $500. Um, there is a new, newer coupon code to get the $500 off. It's Bulletproof Books. Originally, it was just Bulletproof, but I had to create a new code so I could set an expiration. Originally, I said that once the last lesson got published, it, I would take the coupon code away. But obviously, I don't want to just cut it off for people. I know there's a lot of people who've been emailing me who are interested. So what I did was I created this coupon code called Bulletproof Books, which still gets you the 500 off, and it expires at midnight on September 30th. So you have till the end of this month to, uh, to take advantage of that. And I'm also going to show you in a little bit some offers that some of my app partner slash friends have been very kind to, um, to allow me to offer to you by way of discount. So if you sign up for Bulletproof Bookkeeping, I'm gonna help you build your tech stack. I'm gonna go through a series of apps that I think you're gonna love and some discounts that they're offering for those who sign up for Bulletproof Bookkeeping. So uh, we're gonna cover that in actually just a few minutes. So quick overview, and Airtable makes this really easy to do. I'm just gonna collapse all these. Uh, we have our major sections. So the first whole section is on banking and bank feeds. And as you've already kind of gotten a glimpse of, it's quite in depth. Uh, I've got it broken up into two parts in terms of setting up not just, uh, or, uh, not just rules, but detailed rules, you know, rules with logic in them. So that, for example, I think one of the examples I use is when you, uh, when you buy stuff at Best Buy, let's say, you can create a rule that says if it's at Best Buy and it's more than 500, put it to fixed assets. And you can then duplicate that rule and say if it's at Best Buy and it's less than 500, then put it to computer equipment or whatever your sort of default go-to would be for stuff you buy at Best Buy. It's stuff like that. It's Of course, I show you the simple, here's how to create a simple rule, but I get, I get deeper with it and I get more and more in depth about it. And so uh, the coupon code is bulletproof books, right? Yeah, it's bulletproof books. Okay. So is there more than just the video? Is there a text below too? There are. There are some okay. lessons don't have write-ups, but there are a lot of very detailed write-ups in a lot of the lessons. I um probably about halfway through recording, I was encouraged by Greg, so you have him to thank, that the write-ups are really valuable and useful to people. So you'll see more of that towards the end of the course, but you'll see it throughout. You know, most of the lessons have something like here's the write-up on the bank feed automation this is all text but there are some that i can show you that go uh that have some really detailed screenshots you know if i go to one of the most recent ones if we go into management reports for example and I'm trying to think of a really good example of this uh, uncategorized transactions where are you um, there uncategorized income and expenses um, and these are two, by the way, that are planned. I just, and this will take me probably five minutes in the next couple of weeks. I'll get them in there just to show you how to create a sales by product report and a sales by customer report, uh, which, they're, cause they're just reports that I look at a lot. Um, but if I go into this lesson and notice, as long as I'm logged into the course, clicking on the links on Airtable takes you right there, right? So here's a detailed write up. I've got some screenshots. Here's a screenshot I've added in because somebody actually posted a question at the bottom saying, hey, I'm not that familiar with Smartsheets, but I've got it all set up the way you showed. She just wasn't sure how to share it with her client to get her client in here. So I added the screenshot that shows, all right, you know, here it is. Here's how you share it, right? And if I felt it was really necessary to do a video to explain it, I, I would have just done a supplemental video and uh, added that in. Do um, we have um, access to the Airtable or is that just something you're showing so, well, no, of course, yeah, I can give you a link that will take you directly to the Airtable, but I'm also going to embed it. I'm going to add a welcome section at the very beginning of the course, probably over the weekend, and I'll have it embedded there. So uh, when that happens, 
and you're looking at these categories, you'll see one before the bank feeds. It's going to say, welcome to Bulletproof Bookkeeping with QuickBooks Online. I'm going to put that in there. I'll probably put, I might even put like this whole video in there because as you're already seeing a lot of this, you know, a lot of today's recording is going to walk you through, you know, how to navigate all this. Although I think you'll find the navigation is extremely straightforward. Um, so a couple of questions here coming up about, is there a community or can I post questions and comments? So um, I was going to cover that later, but since it's coming up now, I'll, I'll explain. So when you're in any given lesson, if you go through my bank feed automation with detailed rules part one, and you see something in the video that you're not clear about, you can absolutely post a comment here, right? And here's a comment from one of the people who have signed up, right? So you can post a comment here. And I, I, as you know, those of you who know me, know me well, I'm very good about responding usually within 24 hours at the most, usually a lot faster. Um, the other thing that you'll find when you sign up for this, if I go back up to the course locker, is there is a community built in, which I've included, but in all honesty, I'm thinking about pulling it because the truth is, I think it's, you, you might as well just post the questions on the lessons. That's what most people are doing anyway. Matthew's shaking his head. He's like, no, don't take it away. <laughs> Um, the idea that Kajabi has with this is a lot of people, when they do courses, they, they have like a private Facebook group to go with it. I went this route because I said, rather than have you going to a Facebook group, and it's like as if we don't already have enough Facebook groups that we belong to, this keeps everything inside the site. So let's put it this way. Those of you who've signed up, if you all start telling me, hey, no, don't take it away. I love it. I will absolutely keep it. Um, you can go into this community and I have an area for general questions, meaning I don't see a topic for this. I'm just going to post it here. And I've created topics for each of the major sections and each of the, you know, subsections even. So if you have a question about, you know, customers and setting up customers, anything along those lines, that's, you know, you're going to post that here and you can see all the, the topics as you go down. Now, when you do post uh, something, if I just go into general questions, I can write something. You can actually post, uh, uh, what do you call it, photos, videos, and you can even link things. They're adding to this. They're building it out and making it more and more robust. So, again, if you guys give me the feedback and say, no, don't take it away. We want it. I will absolutely keep it. It's already included. When you sign up for the course, you'll see this also in your course lockers. You, you already have a vote in the chat section to don't take it away. Okay, so Jessica says, I haven't officially started the course yet, but I already read most posts in the community. Okay, beautiful. All right, good to know. And what, maybe what I'll do, if I know that people really are interested, in, you know, then maybe I'll make more of a point of going in there and posting things and <coughs> participating. Maybe seeing me posting in there more often will encourage others to do likewise. As a community, though, is there another way that we can, um, like maybe receive email alerts that, that people are posting things in there. You know how. I don't think they have that option yet. Yeah. If you go into the Kajabi users group, they're talking about that and that they'll probably give each user settings where they can decide what they get notified about and what they don't. All right. Um, so for now, for those of you who have signed up, for those of you who will hopefully sign up now that you're seeing how wonderful this all is, um, you know, just get in the habit of going in there if you want to start kind of posting and participating and seeing if there's anything new. When you do go in there, uh, at the top, it takes you into the feed. So you'll already see the most recent thing that was posted and the, the topic that it went to. And so notice here's Peter, he commented with this question and you can now click on this topic, the list chart of accounts topic to get into just that particular topic and you can see my reply to him and so on and so forth. So it's, you know, it's pretty good. I think it has room to grow, right? And that's, that's what I'm kind of waiting on for this. And I believe they will grow it and they will keep making it better and better and better and better and better. Um, so back to the course outline, and I will absolutely, first of all, everybody after today is going to get an email with, you know, a lot of the sort of high level information that I'm guessing you're going to want about today. I'll give you, of course, I'll let you, I'll give you the bullet, the, the, the coupon code, which again is Bulletproof Books. And again, it expires on September 30th. I will give you the link to this course outline because a lot of people have remarked to me that they like this layout for the course outline you know, in terms of using it, especially because I've included the hyperlinks directly to each lesson, this will allow you to, uh, 
kind of navigate, maybe find what you're looking for very quickly. Uh, you can use this search box. So if I'm looking for something on the statement of cash flows, I can type cash flow and it will find that. And this one video alone is more than an hour. It is the most in-depth look I've given at the statement of cash flows. It actually reviews all three major statements, the balance sheet, the profit and loss, and the statement of cash flows. And similar to what I do in what has become one of my more popular videos on YouTube now, which is the bookkeeping basics with QuickBooks Online, I go through a series of about 10 transactions, post them, show you the impact on each of the financial statements. I talk about the debits and credits behind the forms, kind of in the style that I've been doing on the weekly Friday Zooms lately. And uh, speaking of that, I've recently published probably about five or six videos on QuickBooks Online talking about specifically the way that you post the transactions and how that can play into, you know, making the books that much more bulletproof because you're creating a better audit trail. Uh, usually it requires a little bit more work in terms of the way that you post things, but when you do it, the outcome you get uh, is much better in terms of making the books bulletproof. So I'm going to include those videos, even though they're already out there for free as probably an appendix to this course, just so that you don't have to go hunting for them. It's all there. Um, so this is the course outline in a nutshell, and I'm going to play some excerpts from some of these videos in a few minutes. But first, what I would love to do is have somebody who's been through the course a little bit uh, talk to us for a few minutes. I'd like to hear from you. I haven't actually had a chance yet to really talk to anybody who's been taking the course. Uh, Lisa, are you still with us? I am. Um, would you mind, because I know you were one of the early signups, and so I'm hoping by now you've had a chance to go through some of it and that you can kind of share some of your thoughts with us. Sure, and I have gone through some of it. I just haven't gone through as much as I'd like to have by now. <laughs> but, you know, this is actually one of the things I actually really like about the course is that you get to do it at your own speed. And so, the, as Seth showed earlier, the most sessions are about 30 minutes, some are 15 so it, you can bite it off in, in bite sizes for all of our busy schedules. So if you have an hour, do an hour. If you have 15, do 15. And I says, said earlier, you know, if you're more advanced, maybe you don't want to go through the beginning sessions. I I've been doing um, QuickBooks and QuickBooks Online uh, probably the last three, four years, but QuickBooks for over 10. I still think there's value in going through even the beginning ones. There's, so, there's Excel tips and tricks. Uh, he shows a little bit of SASANT. I, I have FOMO. I, I, I hate missing what Seth teaches because, and I would be remiss, you guys know I have to say it, you got to go for the golden nuggets. Yeah, go for the nuggets. <laughs> you got to go for the nuggets. And for those of you who are not here, I got to tell you what golden nuggets are because this is something for our 97 and up group. Seth often teaches, and as he's teaching, he will casually mention something or show us something that's not part of the lesson plan at all. And it has huge value to so many of us that we've never seen before. And we'll be, stop, stop, go back. What was that? And it can be life changing or just a simple thing that can just save you time and just make your life easier. Actually, one of the things he showed me was Google Keep made my husband's and my life <laughs> easier. So um, I don't know. I do think there's a lot of value for all levels and it is for basic, but I do think it's also for advanced. <laughs> Seth showed earlier that the, the great advantage of, of the... I don't know, oh, actually, did you show that? Uh, let me mention it. If you didn't show it, I, I have to remember. With each of the videos he has, there's notes. He has notes underneath each section. So you can skim it and see if it's something that you want to look at. But I like to take notes when, I, when I'm learning, but he also has it all there for you. And it's laid out so nicely. And as he mentioned, the search option, you can search for something if you're looking for something specific. Um, I just, and the other valuable thing as Seth mentioned earlier too, and I just think this is almost priceless. If you buy a book and, and you learn from the author, you're never gonna talk to the author. If you go to a presentation and you're in, um, whether it's live or um, online, you're there with an hour and you get to speak to the presenter. This is something unique that Seth is always available to us. And as he mentioned, 24 hours or even sooner, he's gonna get back to you. And so that I think is a huge piece to always have um, be, be, be able to be reach out to the instructor. And the other huge piece that I think is so valuable is that this is not, this is not done. Seth will keep adding to it. So I actually don't know of any course that you can buy and that it keeps growing 
and and there's no additional fee it's just it's just part of the package so if anybody's hesitant or thinking do i want to spend the five hundred dollars i'm telling you it's going to be the best five hundred dollars you ever spent so get it before the coupon expires so i've enjoyed it i, I encourage you all to to check it out if you haven't thank you lisa and uh alexa's commenting and she also asked the same question when she registered for today that as a seasoned professional, you know, is this something that's going to be useful to her? And I'll say this, and I'm not just saying this to be a salesman. I'm saying this because I truly mean it. And this is why I'm doing it. The bottom line is if you're not sure, you can sign up. And if it's within 30 days and you decide, you know what, this is all remedial to me, then just let me know and I'll refund your money. I, have, I, I stand behind the product with that much conviction. You know, I have no problem refunding 100% of your money if you decide that it's not for you. That's all. And you know, I don't care why. I mean, I would love to know why, obviously the feedback, especially if I can use it to improve in some way. But if it's just, you know, if, if you don't have a reason, if it's whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Just let me know within 30 days of signing up and I'll give you your money back. You know, I'm not here to hold anybody's money hostage. I want to make sure that if you sign up for this, <clears throat> that I, honestly, my hope is that you'll appreciate that this is actually a $2,500 course. That's what it was designed to be, right? And I wanted to price it at something uh, that made it easy for people to, uh, uh, you know, to access. And especially while it was rolling out, I said, basically, if you're willing to, you know, put your confidence in me, I will make the guarantee that I will uh, roll out the content every week. I have made good on that for about 95% of it. Like I said earlier, a couple weeks I didn't roll anything out and I tried to make up for it by rolling out extra in the subsequent weeks. So bottom line, it's all there now. There's a few planned lessons in there that I will definitely add in over the next month or two. And then as Lisa confirmed that I had mentioned earlier, I'll add to this when and where it's appropriate. I already will probably add an updated uh, version on one of the last lessons on how to use ClickUp to do your monthly maintenance on the books because I will, uh, I want to show just kind of now that ClickUp 2.0 is out and I did finally make that change, I want to just show the differences. Most of it doesn't change much. It's just, it's just a different layout uh, for the most part. Most of what you'll see in that video now is, will still apply in terms of how you set up your tasks. And I give you a deep dive on the recurrence, uh, the recurring tasks, because I know that's a big thing for a lot of people when they do their uh, monthly bookkeeping checklist kind of thing. Um, how am I doing so far? Is everybody able to take me seriously with these glasses on and my, <laughs> and my birthday hat? That's, that's pretty much what you always wear on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> yeah. You didn't even notice, huh? Didn't notice. All right. Perfect. Um, let me look at some of the other questions. Um, yeah, those nuggets. What? <laughs> Those are Seth's nuggets. I, know. I, know, I didn't say that. I, I said hey, golden nuggets. Let's keep this PG-13. <laughs> um, I'm just going through. Uh, well, hey, we found out the other day that it's not just Seth, right? That, that produces nuggets. Yes, Greg gave us some golden nuggets Yay. on Tuesday. So, by the way, I thought was, this would be exciting to uh, announce. A lot of you know Vanessa Ocampo. Um, she's very close with Marriott Martinez. And so Too Vanessa lost. actually reached out to me and asked me about translating this course in Spanish. Oh. And I am so excited that she is interested in doing that. So I already responded to her and we we're going to talk. She was going to try and be here today. She messaged me a little while ago, apologizing and saying that she couldn't make it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just set that up as a whole separate product and have her translate it. I'm going to split the fees with her, and uh, and we're going to make a Spanish version of this course. I'm just going to give her access to the raw video so she can strip out my audio track and re-record it. I don't know if she'll do it in her own voice or somebody else's, but bottom line is we're going to get this course done in Spanish, which I'm wow. very, very excited about. Very cool. So yeah, habla español. That's awesome. I think um, it'd be awesome if, if she trained you mm -hmm. to... <laughs> speak Spanish. Speak Spanish. Yeah. Oh God, that would be that will take a long time, Greg. I do. <laughs> I know enough to be dangerous. Yeah. I know un poquito. We have to living in California. We have to un poquito. Un poquito. And I know some bad words too. Um, no simpatico. Habla en español. Con derechos no comprende. Affiliate program. So 
uh, some of you have signed up for this already. And Lisa, thank you so much for that uh, testimonial. I see people already commenting in the chat that you've just now helped me sell this course. So thank you for My that. Pleasure. For My pleasure. My pleasure. Um, so you can sign up to become an affiliate. Uh, Alexa reminded me that I probably need to do a little bit more in explaining how this works. So I'm going to do that here and I'm going to put up probably a, a page on the site that it kind of explains how this works. But it's pretty straightforward, I think. You, you know, I, I'll get you the link, obviously, for those of you who want to sign up. Uh, it's real quick. You put in your name, your email, and you create a password. And it's asking for your PayPal email in case that might be different from this one because I'm going to pay you out via PayPal, right? And Kajabi, which again is the platform I've used to build all this, will track any affiliate sales. Once you fill this out, you'll immediately get an email so you can log into your affiliate account and it'll give you the links to the different courses that I've made available for affiliate purposes. And uh, so you can log in and get the link for Bulletproof Bookkeeping and use that link when you're telling people about it. And then when they sign up through your link, Kajabi will let me know that that referral came through you. And once a month, I'll go through and I'll pay out. Uh, it's 10% is my payout as of right now. And what I'm thinking of doing is adding an incremental layer to that. So I'll pay 10% on like the first referral and maybe 20% on every referral thereafter. That part I haven't decided 100% for sure. But bottom line is if people start referring a lot, I want to make sure I reward you for that very well. You know, it's my it's the best way I can say thank you for you know, for making those referrals and putting that kind of confidence in me and in what I've created. So, of and course, if you have any questions. Technically speaking, when it comes to that affiliate program. Oh, yeah. So the login for your affiliate is not necessarily the same as your login for the for the site where you've signed up for the course. Um, what I encourage you to do is just use the same login credentials. But uh, it is different. A few people have gotten a little stuck on that. Don't yell at me. It's it's Kajabi's platform. I just use it, <laughs> right? But uh, but it's yeah, that is one kind of a quirk. And I imagine they must have their reasons why they want this on a separate database. I I couldn't tell you, but that's uh, that's a Kajabi thing for sure. So it is a different login. But like I said, I would encourage you to just use the same exact login because they're both on mynerdenterprises.com domain. So if you're using something like LastPass. You can use the same login and LastPass will get you in there either way. All right, so just so that there's no confusion about that. Okay, now, next thing, who wants to learn about the partner deals that I have for you, for those of you who sign up for this? All right, I've got what I think are some pretty damn exciting deals. So, uh, and I'll have you know that I created this with Lucid Chart. Matthew and I were just there this week. They had a little mini conference called Lucid Connect or Lucid Chart Connect. And uh, so this gave me a great use case for playing around with Lucid Chart so I could build this. So here are the people, the companies who have agreed to partner with me and to offer you special deals. So what's going to happen is anybody who signs up today or, you know, over the weekend, obviously we'll give it some time. Um, and certainly anybody, because I know you're going to ask, what if I signed up already? Yes, absolutely, you will be eligible for these deals. Ralphie's getting excited. I don't know if you hear him in the background. Um, he's very excited about these deals especially. Um, so here are the deals. Bilby's will give you a, th a, fr a three-month free trial. You know, normally a lot of these apps, they give you like a couple of weeks. So Bilby's will extend your free trial to three months, which for a product like Bilby's is great because it'll really give you time to fill it in with data and get your bills and receipts sent in and really get the feel for how this product works. I absolutely love this app uh, and I highly recommend you try it. And this is a great opportunity to try it and have some time with it. Um, Qbox, in all honesty, this would be available to you anyway, but I've done a 17 video series for Qbox on how to clean up your QuickBooks desktop file. And it's absolutely free. So I'm gonna, when I send the email out following up after today, I'll send it out tomorrow to everybody who's registered for this. Um, you'll see the link. You can click in there. All you have to do is enter your name and email and QBox will send you the links to access these 17 videos. It is an in-depth series on basically how to audit your company in QuickBooks Desktop um, and get that file cleaned up, whether it's for yourself or for your client. Hey, Seth, what does your Lucid chart look like? Oh, was I not sharing my screen? <laughs> Greg, where were you five minutes ago? In another service I provide. You're slacking over here. Yeah, Greg is my um, official reminder to share my screen because I often forget to do it. Um, so here's what my Lucid chart looks like, right? 
Um, so we've got Billabies, we've got Qbox, Chata.ai. I am falling more and more deeply in love with this app. I've been playing with it on a weekly basis. I've been talking with Haley, who works with them. And uh, so for them, good till October 31st, you get a 30% discount on their premium product. So if you haven't played around with Chata, this is a great chance to play around with it. Um, it's, you use natural language to query your QuickBooks online data to run reports, but you can save those reports and render them in lots of great visual ways with pie charts and line charts. And more recently, they've added these heat map versions of the reports for when you're doing anything comparative in nature. It's just really cool. And it, it's, I used it after I completed my 2018 books to run some, uh, some really cool analyses. Um, on my 2018 data, I got a really slick looking pie chart that showed me my revenue mix and my breakdown, which I love because it really let me see, you know, where the bulk of my revenues were coming from in a very visual way. I did something similar with my expenses and then I did some year over year comparisons. Really, 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 I love this app. And what I really love about it is the team behind the app. They're constantly there. They're constantly gathering data and using that data to make updates to the product. I think this product is going to be here for a long time to come. And, you know, also having met with the CEO, Kelly, a couple of times, he's got some other really out of the box thing, things that he's working on that he's told me about along the same lines of what Chata, the app that you might be familiar with now does, but not outside the realm of the bookkeeping and accounting stuff, querying things like the Yelp database to find out what it is that people are saying about a particular brand's service or products. It's, it's, they're just doing some really cool stuff and I'm very excited and proud to be sort of aligned with them. Um, Chronobooks, the company that makes backups of QuickBooks online files. Uh, Nate is willing to offer a three month free trial, normally two weeks. And by the way, if you're a pro advisor, your account is free. You get one account for free and um, you, your cost is only five bucks a month instead of 10 you know, per company or whatever. So that's normally provided, but the deal he's giving us is a, an extended free trial for three months. You can try Chrono books, really slick app, really easy to use. Um, so it's, it's worth trying in any case, but you know, through me, you can get the three month free trial. Excuse me. Um, Nimble, as some of you know, is my favorite CRM on the planet. Um, and Nimble, John Ferrara is, at, by the way, he's coming back on my Friday Zoom in a, next month, actually. Uh, and we're going to do something called Smart Contacts. And uh, we're going to talk to you about some really cool stuff that Nimble is doing. They've given their contacts area an overhaul recently. Really, really slick interface. It's just now it does an even better job of letting you see all the correspondence you have with a contact <coughs> in whatever form it may have been, whether it was email or Twitter or whatever, all there in one place. So uh, Nimble's awesome. He's giving 40% off for the first three months on his app. Okay. And then um, uh, uh, late to, hello. <laughs> um, so a bit late to the game today. Uh, Giraffe came through uh, at the last minute today. They're going to give you 70% off yeah. for six months on their light product. Mm. Okay. So they have two kind of levels of products. They have a light product and then they have the full. The full one I've been using, uh, this is the first time I've got an app. And by the way, somebody's got some background noise. So if you don't mind just muting, can everybody just kind of mute? Let me see. Let's see if I mute. Yeah. For some reason, I can't mute that person. I can't either. Uh, maybe because we're both trying it. You try it and then I won't. <laughs> Maybe we kept just going. No, it's still not working. Yeah, I'm not able to either. All right, I have another idea. I put them on hold. Nope, not working. They're gone. They're gone. Well, the noise is gone. Yeah, okay. she, all right, she left. Good. All right, I was considering kicking her out, and then she could just rejoin when she's... Uh, Anyway, all good. So Giraffe is an awesome product. Their light product is, like it says, it's light. It's not everything that you get with the full product. Um, but the more, this is another one of these apps. The more I play with it, the more I love it. It's the first app of its kind that actually convinced me to get off my spreadsheets for purposes of doing projections. Um, I've looked at a lot of the apps that claim to do it. The problem is none of them offered the flexibility that a spreadsheet offers in terms of really being able to set up your drivers and assumptions and, and doing the calculations with formulas and making that flow 
to the right place on the financials. Um, so, okay, I think I was able to mute this time. Me too. So, perfect. So, uh, this is the first time I've run across a product that I'm confident will actually successfully get me out of my spreadsheets. And I've been using it on three different companies right now and building it out. And, um, and, and I love it. I love every piece of it. Today, I actually talked with Evan, who's one of the main guys there at Giraffe. And uh, he just, you know, it was some simple questions, but he showed, I, you know, it was like something I just couldn't quickly figure out on my own. How do you um, set up like sometimes insurance? You might pay for it quarterly. So you want the projections plotted out quarterly. In two seconds, he showed me. Once he showed it to me, it made perfect sense. And that's what I'm finding with this app is the, um, the more I use it, the more I'm finding once you see how to do something, and once you understand it, it makes perfect sense. There's like a, there's a real logic to it. And I think it's because it's been built by guys who were true CFOs and they understand how a financial model really needs to work. So, uh, so giraffe is there. And then last, but most definitely not least, uh, Matthew came in today with this offer. It's a Bulletproof Bookkeeping launch exclusive offer, which is that you can try vendor sync absolutely free until the end of the year, December 31st, 2019. And if you don't know what vendor sync is or what it does, what I'm going to suggest that you do is take advantage of this, sign up, <clears throat> especially as many of you I know still work with people who are in desktop, right? This is a product that will help make your bank coding a thousand times faster than you could ever do with the regular bank feeds in QuickBooks desktop. And uh, I'm still trying to push Matthew to, uh, to create this for QuickBooks Online. It is super slick in terms of how you can, t especially if you're doing a cleanup job, yeah. you would be insane to do a cleanup job without talking to Matthew and finding out how vendor sync works. Because I guarantee you that cleanup job, you will cut the time it takes in half, if not more. And you'll uh, hopefully charge a flat fee like we do. You'll value price it. And then you'll use vendor sync and get the work done in a fraction of the time. So complimentary until December 31st, 2019. Um, and now what I want to do is I want to play a few excerpts. I kind of went ahead and prepared, you know, specific things that I thought I would show you. But before we do that real quick, is there anybody else who has been into the course who would like to share a few words on it? Seth, I, I'm not into the course yet, but I wanted to address something that Dominique has asked in the in the chat and okay. that's regarding which app should we use to use the course effectively and she's asking Smartsheet, ClickUp, Airtable, Lucidchart and the, the, the best answer to that Dominique is whatever tool you're going to need to get your job done is are the tools that you need don't you don't necessarily want to go all in with ClickUp if it's not going to fix the problem that, that you have for your particular task management solution. It's a good point. I mean, just because there's always a lot of different applications out there and you will hear all of us talk about all kinds of different ones all the time from somebody who suffers from shiny squirrel syndrome. Trust me, it's really, really important as best you can, you know, pick the ones you think are going to work well for you and focus on them, learn them in and out. And as soon as you've done that, then you know, you truly know if it's going to be a good app or not for you, but pick one, focus to it. And figure out what the problem is that you're trying to solve versus trying to create a problem for the app that you're dedicating yourself to and committing yourself to. Yep. And I'm just looking by the way at the live Facebook feed because I, I've been sort of ignoring it, but mostly just comments, people saying nice things. So many Facebook groups already. I would right. like to talk about the course. Uh, please do. Oh, hi. It's, it's me. It's Melissa. It's just the sun has gone down, and so now I'm just black there. I um, see. <laughs> um, I, anyway, um, I, I'm just reiterating everything that Lisa said. It's... Um, there's just so much there and I really thought 
yeah, yeah, do I really need it and stuff? And I've been working with this for a long time. And actually, I've only gone through like the first couple of sections. But every time there's just one little thing, it is worth the 500 bucks just to learn that one thing, because it saved me so much time going forward. And that's just, I'm just beginning it. So I know that actually the latter sections are going to be something um, where I am weaker than the, fir than the uh, first sections. So I highly recommend it, even if you think you're really advanced and you've been working on QuickBooks for a long time, you're still going to learn it. A lot of nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I, by the way, Heather, I just noticed your question in the chat. Um, it looks like most people have answered most of your questions, but the question specifically about uh, helping you in how to audit your clients' books, um, there's actually a free lesson in Nerd Buzz, which is the blog on the new site, which you have access to for free. If you've taken an account on my site, it's probably already there in your course locker. Um, and there is a whole, it's like a one hour video that I did a few years back that I used to give away in exchange for, you know, people's email addresses. Um, that's called how to audit your books and QuickBooks online. It was recorded a couple of years ago. So the QuickBooks online product has changed a little bit in terms of its look and feel since then. But all of that, all of the same stuff still applies because these are just the fundamentals of how to audit a set of books, right? Which in, in a in very short form, is a matter of going through the balance sheet. You know, in the in the in the C, in the public accounting world, when I used to do audits at a CPA firm, the way we would describe it is we beat the hell out of the balance sheet and then we go through the PL. And so that video walks you through it. But in this actual course, let me share my screen again uh, and show you this. If I actually collapse all the groups, it's just easier to uh, get down there quickly. So I have this, the second to last section, so far is a one lesson section. It's a 25 minute video on how to catch up your books quickly and accurately. It's about catching up the books, but it speaks a lot to what you're going to want to know in terms of how to audit a company's books. And then the last section, the maintaining your books, your checklist, also is going to speak volumes to that, you know, to really how to audit the books. Both of these um, uh, sections or, or all these lessons really speak to how to actually use the balance sheet as your checklist and how to go through the different accounts and verify or do whatever testing you need to do to verify that you've included everything, that everything's accurate and that everything is complete and that everything's recorded in the right period and so on and so forth. Um, so, so hopefully that will help, you know, uh, you know, show you exactly where in the course you can go to get the answer to that part of your question specifically. Um, all right, so let me, I'm just going to play a few excerpts of the videos. Thanks to Matthew, I know how to do this now so I can get the, uh, the volume playing through the uh, webinar here. And uh, let me just go back up here. We're going to expand all. This time when I hit share, I'm going to choose to share my computer sound. Um, if the volume is like ridiculously loud, somebody please let me know right away. I think it should be fine, but I may not be able to, it may not render volume wise the same for you as it does for me. So the first thing I want to do is we're going to go into the bank feeds and we're going to go to part two code a bank statement. So in this section, we've gone past the rules. And what I, one of the things I wanted to address in this part of the course is the sort of what if scenarios of, you know, A, my, I'm working with a local credit union or something that's actually not included in the list of banks that I can link up with the bank feeds. But not just that, what if I get caught in that crossfire where the bank feed breaks and the bank says it's QuickBooks and QuickBooks says it's the bank Using SASANT, which Lisa mentioned that I teach you a little bit of SASANT, there's a number of apps that are covered throughout the course that are sort of tangent to what I'm teaching. So here we're going to learn how to use SASANT to grab a CSV file from the bank account and prep it and import it so that even if something goes wrong with the bank feeds, you can get it done. And in other words, even, even getting caught in that crossfire won't slow you down a bit. You'll have the resource right here that walks you through step by step exactly how to do this. So uh, I want to just, and I'm not going to hold you hostage too long on this. I'll just play a couple of minutes of it for you. Just for those of you, you know, who may want to, where it helps, you know, to get a little bit of the flavor of this. So 
I just want to get to about the 12 minute mark here and play this for you. That's one thing I hope they add is the ability to sort of index the video so you can get right to a certain spot. Monthly thing. So you're going to see this once. So that's not a good example. Um, but I go to Ralph's periodically and I use my business card, which I really shouldn't do. So I just record that as a distribution. But I, notice it's going to be all broken up because the way the information comes in, it says purchase authorized on and it's got the date and it's got different numbers. So all the Ralph's transactions don't come in together. But here's how you bring them together very quickly. This is where you've got your filters. And you use your search in the filters. And I want to search for Ralph's. And OK. And now I've got, I quickly chisel it down to a list of all the stuff that's got the word Ralph's in it. And notice there's even other variations. Bottom line, all of the Ralph's transactions are going to go to Ralph's as the payee. And they're going to go to shareholder distributions. Notice it auto-filled. Even though the list is filtered, it still sees there was another uh, row or several of them that had shareholder distributions in it. Now we're going to copy this, but be careful. You can't just paste it down because there's hidden cells in between that will be impacted by that paste. So there's a command we're going to use that I have here, which is called select visible cells. Now your Excel program won't have this in here yet. So here's how you find and add it really quickly. If I right click up here, you will by default have the save, the undo, the redo. It just won't have this or this, which is actually strike through. These are just things I use frequently. So you're going to right click anywhere up here and you'll go to where it says customize quick access toolbar. And it brings you up to this. And just to save time, we're going to go past popular commands and go right to all commands. Right, so this way we have everything. Type in S, it'll take you straight down to all the ones that begin with S. And then you'll find select visible cells here. And then you'll add it in. Obviously, I've already got it. I don't want to add it again. But if you click add, it'll add it in here. And then once you're in here, you can reorder these things. You can select something and I can move them up or down as I need to. So this way you can customize exactly uh, what shows up in there and in what order. So I truly, I, I truly tried not to leave a stone unturned. I think a lot of people might have gone right past how to get the select visible cells thing added in there. But I knew that if I did that, a lot of you would be left wondering, okay, that looks awesome, but how do I actually do it, right? And then of course the rest of the video goes through how to get, and, and Matthew mentioned this in the chat, this is what VendorSync does really well for desktop, right? Um, so, so it, again, it, this video walks you through how to get a bank statement coded. You can download the CSV file for just that one month or even for a six month period. This video shows you how to get them coded and how to get them imported real, real quick, right? That's so, exactly what uh, Lisa was referring to as one of Seth's golden, golden nuggets. It's not listed on, on the um, syllabus the syllabus it's not listed on the index there that that oh we talk for for 45 seconds about how to get select visible cells on your excel but there it is and it's it's buried but but it's there and it changes people's uh lives in some <laughs> in some way small way that's what actually what I wanted to interject as he was watching, showing that video. I was like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. I should say, do not skip the first lessons. Go from the beginning to the end because it's more than just about QuickBooks. It's about streamlining your processes. And as Melissa was saying earlier, I don't care how advanced you are, you're going to learn something. And the value of $500 is just, it's priceless. you got to do it before the 30th. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that Seth does better than most people, I always say it's really easy to forget what you had to learn. Mm -hmm. So when you're, when you're creating a course or you're trying to help teach somebody something else, sometimes we skip over the little things that we forgot we had to learn along the way. And this is a great example of that. So this course, you know, Seth has always done a great job of really trying to lay out all the specific details, the things you need to know to, to accomplish your goal. So great job. Thank you, Matthew. And Heather, to your question in the chat, um, when you're using Sassan to import this stuff, and actually this gets demonstrated as you go through this whole section, 
um, when you import it through SASINT, you're usurping the bank feeds. You're going, you're importing these transactions directly into QuickBooks Online. So they're posting to the register. Now, as you'll see in this video, and I did it in this order on purpose, if you've also got the transactions downloaded, once you do the import, you go to the bank feeds, everything's going to be matched up and it's going to be matched up perfectly. Right? So, so, cause the question was um, when you code the transactions, like you show in the video clip and then import them, does this mean they get automatically uh, accepted or reviewed? So no, we're not importing this to the bank feed. In fact, there's another lesson here. Part one shows you how to import directly into the bank feeds, which is built into QBO. You go into the bank feeds area and where you would normally click update to update the feeds, there's a little drop down you can click on and you can browse to the CSV file and import it that way. And then it acts just as though you had uh, downloaded it from the bank. So you, basically I, I make sure that I show you all the possible options for how to get this done. And um, to Dominic's point in the chat, I think Lisa just kind of spoke to that a little bit. I do actually go through a lot of systems and processes in here. And that's why I call it Bulletproof Bookkeeping. It's not just about how to record transactions in QuickBooks Online. It's how to make the books solid and bulletproof so that you can prove every number. Um, we're running short on time here, but I do want to show you one of the other lessons because this lesson is probably my favorite example of the write-ups and the screenshots and the extents that I went to, um, you know, to really make sure that you had the entirety of a resource on this one particular uh, type of transaction. So we're going to go to my lesson on how to record loans. It's actually called Bulletproof Loans. And here it is. So let's go over to that lesson. And over here, I've, what I did was I, I created a scenario for you where you're taking out a, a hefty loan from the bank and they're taking out a chunk as a fee for the loan so that I could show the use case where you're not getting the full amount that you borrowed, deposited into your bank account and how to deal with that. Now, for most of us sitting here, the accounting concepts are straightforward, right? But I think you'll find, first of all, it also gives you this template, which you can download here, my effective interest template, which you'll see demonstrated in the video. And as you can see already from the screenshot, you put in the loan amount, you put in the term and months, and you put in the, um, oops, I didn't mean to actually click to play it yet. Um, and you put in the, let me just refresh it. Uh, and you, you, so you put in the loan amount, you put in the term and months, and you put in the interest rate, and it populates your whole effective interest table. You know, and bear in mind, it's not going to match perfectly with the bank because the banks compound differently. This is going to assume simple monthly compounding. But you've got a very thorough write-up here with lots of screenshots that explain every piece. And going to the bulletproof part, I show you that there's really two ways to book the loans. And there's one way that I feel makes it more bulletproof. And, uh, and I show you the difference. I show you both ways of recording the loans and which way I think is more bulletproof and why. And you may also have noticed I just clicked, I, I, I had this marked as complete, I just clicked it again. So you can mark these lessons complete so that you can kind of keep track of your progress. It doesn't mean you won't be able to watch the video, but it gives you kind of a status when you're browsing the course and shows you how much of the course you've actually completed. Um, <laughs> I'm watching the chat. So yes, that was part of the challenge, Lisa, was to see if people would take me seriously while I'm doing this with my special hat and glasses. <laughs> it's um, not even phasing you, it's perfect. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's the idea, is to act perfectly serious, like nothing's wrong, <laughs> right? So the, uh, I, I wanted to actually show you some more experts, but we're technically out of time and I don't want to hold people hostage, but I am more than happy to stay a little longer and answer any questions people have. If you want to unmute, if you just want to say hello, if you want to celebrate with me, um, you know, unmute, say hello, let's talk. And as a few people have pointed out, you know, and I said it too, this, this resource doesn't end here. I'm going to keep responding to people and keep adding to it. And I really want it to be a living, breathing, evolving resource that all of you can take advantage of, whether you're somebody who's on day one of learning how to do bookkeeping, or you're somebody like Alexa, who's been doing this for a long, long time and probably doesn't really need a course like this, but maybe you'll get some nuggets out of it and you'll find that it's worthwhile just the same. And everyone's dead silent. So I purchased the course to supplement the training of my new assistant who had absolutely no bookkeeping experience whatsoever. 
So, and she's the one that's actually been going through the course for me. Um, and I, I really seriously meant to ask her before I left the office today how she was doing with the course. And I didn't. I oh, was well. so. Well, when you do oh. get feedback from her, I would love to, <clears throat> I would love it if you would pass it along to me. I'd love to find out what this is like from the perspective of somebody who is, you know, very new to this. I will do that for sure. <clears throat> because that was a big challenge for me here was trying to create something that would be useful to both a seasoned professional without overwhelming somebody who was not experienced. Right. And that's why I did it. And, you know, I tried to do it in pretty bite sized chunks for the most part, because I figured this way, that was my way of trying to address people at both ends of the spectrum in terms of experience is by doing it in bite sized chunks. I felt that, um, that people could, uh, you know, could, could make use of it from both ends of that spectrum. So thank you all for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, I will email everybody uh, with the information by way of follow-up, how to take advantage of those offers. You're eligible for all of them, right? I said I was going to help you build your tech stack today. And, you know, I, I'd like to think I delivered. Um, and I, uh, I strongly encourage you, if you're thinking of doing courses, to check out Kajabi. Mm -hmm. I can help you learn how to use Kajabi and how to set it up because I've, I've definitely done my 10,000 hours on it myself now in building this course and others. You know, there's other courses I have on here. Um, so reach out to me if you have any questions, if there's anything I can help you with, anything I can do for you. I am, uh, as people have said, very available, very accessible, and very happy to help out any way I can. And I sincerely hope you all uh, join it. I don't actually expect you all to join it, but I, I hope a lot of you do, because I really look forward to getting the opportunity to sort of work with you through the platform in that way and help you in any way I can. You know, your success is my success. So I really hope that you all are able to succeed and blow your practices up. And I hope that I can help you along that journey. So you rock, Congratulations Seth. on your launch, Seth. Really proud of you. Thank you. Now I'm going to take this stuff off. <laughs> Why? <Excellent work. laughs> All right. Now I can seriously say, go sign up. <laughs> Actually, Karen said Elton John's looking for his glasses. I, you know, it's too bad it's not darker here because these are actually glow sticks in the glasses. They, they are technically cool. glowing. It's just Melissa so needs them. Melissa needs them. She's in the dark. That's true. She does. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I am here in the dark. <laughs> All right. And Matthew's got his great, uh, colorful glasses. What was that? Uh, it looks great. I'm really impressed by what you're doing. Thank you, Alicia. I appreciate that. That means a lot coming from you. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. I will uh, see you all around the web. I have a video, by the way, that shows you how to compare your QuickBooks Online trial balance to your tax return. So reach out to me. I see a couple of people have commented about that. Um, I have a free video and a template that you can pay like $25 for or something like that. That'll help you do it. So see you all around the web. All right. Bye.